My friend, the late Dick Gregory, used to trip me out because he was really obsessed with the Queen of England. He would talk about her all the time. Uh, he would always talk about how rich she was. And I thought it was kind of weird, but then I read some of the articles he clipped for me about her and I started researching it on my own. Um, and I realized how stealth this family is about their power, right? And the whole conversation with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry has really brought this back into focus for me and helped me realize that Dick Gregory was really on to something when he was talking about that. And I, I watched the whole Netflix series, The Crown. It's really popular and it's very amusing. And you know, they portray her as powerful, the Queen of England, and they portray her as apolitical, sort of meeting with these prime ministers, being an inspirational figure, doing service, and providing inspiration and symbolic uh, pomp and circumstance for the people of the UK. But they don't really delve into her power, her riches. The Queen of England owns 6.6 .6 billion acres of land, more than anyone else in the entire world. The Queen of England owns one sixth of the planet Earth. Most people don't know that. This is not just a nice 93-year-old lady who like wears cool hats and waves at people. Uh, the second highest land holder in the world is King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, and he only has 547 acres. So you can see she's way ahead of everyone else. I mean, she owns Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Jamaica, like a host of Caribbean islands. Technically, she owns all of that. She owns Belize. Now, these are a real estate holding company structure. They own malls and all kinds of stuff. And the proceeds go to the English treasury, but the queen gets to keep 15% of that for herself. The royal family is worth $88 billion. 88 billion with a B. To put that in perspective, the richest man in the world is supposed to be Elon Musk now. I think he's worth around 75, 80 billion. Well, the royal family's got him by eight, ten billion dollars. So that shows you what we're talking about here. So when we talk about a family, and you can go way back in history, you know, to Mary, Queen of Scots and all of their scandals and how this family has killed their own kin to stay in power and how they have done extraordinary reinventions of themselves from a German family to changing their name and rebranding themselves. Uh, sort of an Anglo-Saxon vibe with the House of Windsor. All of these extraordinary things that they've done to hold on to power, whatever happened with Princess Diana, the constant tight control of their image. This is not just about preserving, you know, uh, propriety or some kind of tradition. This is about protecting vast amounts of wealth. And if you think about it, this is a largely ornamental group of people. I mean, Britain has a parliament. The royal family is actually optional, and it's a very expensive ornamental accessory. Uh, if you remember, we fought to get rid of that. We have a democracy. We don't have an imperial government. So it's no wonder that, you know, the royal family is constantly talking about how they're ser doing service, and they're working, they're working royals, working, 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 they say and trying to make themselves seem important and worth the 88 billion and 6.6 .6 billion acres of land. This is not about tradition. This is about a whole bunch of money. And see, that really puts it in perspective. So thank you, Dick Gregory, <laughs> for pointing out something that perhaps we should all be a little bit more up on. I'm the one who always says, follow the money. I'm Dominique Deprima, and that's my royal take. <laughs>